Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel, that is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And today, I am here to talk about my May TBR. Editing Rachel here. This is actually my April wrap-up. And I read all these books in April. In the month of May, I finished 11 books, which felt awesome, especially having had a reading slump just the month before. And while I still finished the three that I had on my TBR, I was ready to be more ambitious. And I feel like I accomplished that. I didn't finish everything that I showed in my April TBR, but as I'm a mood reader, it's nice to just have some possibilities for things. The first book that I finished in the month of April was Piranazi, which I had talked previously about because this book I started at the end of March, but I didn't have it quite done until April. I picked it up because it was a nomination for the Nebula Awards, but it wasn't something that I was initially interested in. So the a lot of the book hype I was hearing on BookTube was a man with amnesia and he's living in a labyrinth, and that just wasn't something that I was interested in reading. But since it made a nomination list, I figure enough people like this book, maybe I will like it too. So Piranazi is about a man who is called Piranazi, but that's not really his name, but he doesn't remember what his name is. And he's living in what he calls the house, which is a series of halls that have statues in them. There are the lower halls where the tides of the ocean run through. That's where he fishes to get the food that he needs. There's the middle halls where he lives primarily. And then there are the upper halls, which have more of like the sky elements. He talks about one as being filled with clouds and fog, but all, all of this weather patterns and life is happening in these three levels of halls. The other occupant of the house, as he knows it, he calls the other doesn't have another name for the man just the other and he feels in a kinship to him because they are both scientific thinkers and they meet together about twice a week to make experiments and so this book was exactly like i thought it would be it was about a man who discovers how he got to be there and what is the truth behind that happening that is the whole purpose of the book, so I don't want to give spoilers away for someone who is still interested in reading this. I gave this book four stars, and while I am not the exact audience, I did enjoy it. My favorite thing about it was I felt like everything the character did was very logical. I like the atmosphere of the house and the halls, and it had a very, I don't know, the setting of it gave me the secret garden vibes of like that house, how everything shut off. I had those similar vibes, so I liked the atmosphere and I really liked the writing. It was the writing that kept propelling me forward even as I was less interested in the main character. The second book that I finished in April was actually my DNF. And I don't know if anybody's read this before. This is a YA book called Steel Lily by Megan Kurt. And Overall, it wasn't an awful book. I just got to the point where too many things did not match up logically for me. And the pacing of it didn't work. And so I decided to call it quits. The reason why I originally was interested in picking it up is it sounded like it was a steampunk fantasy. And it ends up it's more of a post-apocalyptic dystopia and there are steam elements, but only because one character has certain powers. So something I really liked about this book was the world building. And I felt that I, I wanted to have the story set in this world, but world building alone is not enough for me. I need the characters to make sense. And there were too many things that were happening. There were too many conveniences. And this is more of a plot driven book and less a character driven book. I also had the issue where some of the characters started sounding alike or monomouth and I would have to like go back and look to see who, like who said what or when 
and I felt like some of the characters weren't consistent in their behavior. And so, like I said, I eventually put it down. I would be interested to try something else by this author, just not this series. Just because this series didn't work for me, it might work for someone else. So I don't want you to think that this author is was horrible. She isn't. I think this was her debut novel. And from what I've seen, it looks like she has written more things. So I would definitely encourage someone to go try her her more recent works. The third book I finished in the month of April was Engaging the Enemy by Elizabeth Moon. And this is the third book in her series following Kyla Arvada, or Vada's War, I think is what the series is, calling, is called. But it, it follows the character of Kyla Arvada, or Kai Vada. And, and we pick up with her as she is continuing to find out who has attacked her family. Her and her cousin Stella are trying to decide what is the best way for them to move forward. Should they go out and engage with the pirates? Or should they just try to rebuild their business and keep moving forward from in that direction. And so a lot of the conflict here is both women are on separate ships now and one is slower than the other. So they're not getting to talk as much as they would like to. And I enjoyed this book way more than book two. Like I said, I think book two had like second book syndrome. You don't have to read the first book in order to jump into this one. You would be fine figuring it out. I ended up giving this one five stars because I really am loving this world. I am loving this writing. And I like that also, as well as seeing Kai and Stella's point of view, we got to see Grace's point of view. And Grace is a much older woman. And yeah, I, I think she is awesome just on her own. The fourth book I finished in the month of April is The Four Profound Weaves by R.B. Lemberg. This was also a Nebula nomination, and I had not heard of it before. But there was a note in the novella from the author that said that this story, this novella, was set in their Birdverse uni universe. That is like a tongue twister. I haven't read anything else in this universe, but this story definitely makes me want to. And I feel like this book story really focuses on the central theme of change. And we have two characters, one who is just transformed to a man and is trying to figure out what that actually means and where does that put them in their society now. They had spent many years as a woman. Their society has very rigid rules of what the men do and what the women do. And then the other character is from the tribe that helped the first one change. And she is looking for her aunt, who is a famous weaver. And they band together to go find this aunt because the first character thinks the aunt can also give him his name. Again, this book is primarily focused on the theme of change. And I think it was really well done. And I gave this book five stars. The fifth book I read in April is Riot Baby by Tochi Anyabuchi. And this is another novella. It's another Nebula nomination, which is why I picked it up. And to start off, I want to say that no white person is the audience for this book. But that doesn't mean that we can't enjoy it and can't take the messages from it and to heart. This is a very hard-hitting book. It doesn't shy away from any of the issues that it faces. It just lays everything bare. This is not a feel-good book. This is about revolution. This is another book about change, but change in a different way. So upon starting the book, I immediately was caught and intrigued by Ella's powers. And I don't feel like those were fleshed out enough. I feel like we were introduced to Ella, and then we shifted in the main focus was her younger brother, Kev, and with a little bit of Ella sprinkled in. Something that didn't work for me with this book was the structure. I felt like we were never being shown the action as it was happening. We were either before it happened or we were after it happened. And I'm just not a fan of that sort of style. For me, for it to be more impactful, I need to read through the action and not just talk about it afterwards. But again, 
this is a certain style structure. I am sure the author knew exactly what they were doing. It's just not a style structure that works for me. And I gave this book four stars. The sixth book I finished in the month of April was Jade City by Fonda Lee. And I know I spoke a little bit about this in my April TBR. I didn't understand why everyone loves Shay so much. I get it now. I truly get it. Just at the point that I had read, she hadn't had as much interaction or movement in the plot. I feel like this is a solid fantasy. I don't know if I love it as much as other booktubers that I watch, but I really did enjoy it, and I am definitely going to be reading the next two books this year. I gave this one a four stars. The seventh book I finished in the month of April was Black Sun by Rebecca Rowanhorse. And I am going to link my short review for that book that goes into a little bit more of my feelings. But I'm going to say here, this is a Mesoamerica fantasy, which I really did enjoy. My main issue with this book and the reason why I couldn't love it at a five-star level was I felt like we had two storylines that were really great but were smashed together and so weren't given their proper room to grow and expand. I think that those two storylines would have worked better as companion stories or companion novels converging onto the same point. Then I think that would have given us more interaction with the characters than we had. And honestly, one of my favorite characters, Okoa, we don't meet him until halfway through the book. But I did love the atmosphere in this book, and I am looking forward to getting to read the sequel when it comes out. And I gave this book four stars. So the eighth book that I read in the month of April is a graphic novel. It's actually The Invisible Kingdom, Volume 1, Walking the Path. This graphic novel is by G. Willow Wilson and Christian Ward. I really like G. Willow Wilson's writing, and so I was interested to pick this up. So... I don't read a lot of graphic novels, so I hadn't heard of this, but the second volume is a nomination for the Hugos, and so I picked it up and read the first novel, or read and read the first volume this month. And so April's actually been a very good month for me. The majority of books I read have had really great world building, and I've loved the worlds that I've been interacting with. I'm a big, I really do like G. Willow Wilson's writing. But in this graphic novel, I felt like the ramp up between where you meet the characters and the action happen, missed the introduction, the getting to know the characters. And so when the action happened, I wasn't invested yet. And it made it a little bit harder for me to care about what was happening. You know, perhaps that's just a stylistic element of gra graphic novels. I'm not a huge graphic novel reader. I don't know. I did really enjoy the artwork. It was very pretty. And I think that's actually what propelled me to continue with the story is I wanted to see what pretty image we had on the next page. And I gave the graphic novel three stars. So the ninth thing that I finished in April was Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. And I'm really surprised by how much I loved this book. This is a horror novel, and I don't like horror. I don't like reading it. I don't like watching it. But I actually really like this book. The only reason I picked it up was because it was a Nebula nomination. A lot, obviously, a lot of people liked it, and I was like, all right, I will give it a shot. And yeah, I enjoyed it. Of course, I also went and cheated and read, or I also went and purposefully got spoilers so I knew would know what was coming and wouldn't be affected negatively otherwise. I really enjoy Noemi as a character. I think that she made a lot of sense. And this is a story where Noemi is being sent to go check on her cousin Catalina, who has written some disturbing letters to the family, and they are concerned. And that when she gets there, she is being stonewalled by her cousin's relatives, no, her cousin's in-laws, and yet, you know, doesn't want to back down. Her dad also gave her incentive to not back down. I think that this book is one of those booktube darlings, and so I'm not going to go too much further into the plot. I'm sure that you've already heard of it, but otherwise, I do have a review where I talk more about it. 
and I gave this book five stars. Then the 10th thing I read this month was Breach of Peace by Daniel B. Green. This is a grimdark fantasy novella, and it's actually his debut work. I picked this up because I watched Daniel Green's YouTube show, and I was like, sure, I'm willing to try this, try him out. This follows detectives as they are trying to solve a very gruesome crime, which is why I do say that it is grimdark. I, since this just came out in March, I don't want to say too much else about it. It's not very long. If you like grimdark, go read it. And I gave it four stars. And then the last book that I read in the month of April is Ring Shout by P. Jelly Clark. I discovered him last year and love his writing. Very excited to finally have gotten to this. Um, this is where we follow, I think her name is Maurice. I think in my review I called her Marcy, but then I've heard other reviews since that have said Maurice, so I'm going to go with Maurice. But So we're following Maurice, who is a demon slayer or a monster hunter, and she kills Ku Kluxes, who are clansmen who have been so embroiled in their hate that they have turned into monsters. And again, it's not very long, so you should go read this. So that has been the 11 items that I have read in the month of April. If you have read any of them, I would love to chat with you more in the comments. If you have enjoyed this wrap-up, please, I ask you to subscribe so that you get to continue to see what I am reading. Thank you, and have a great day. Bye!